Hi, my name is Jonathan Queen, and I'm a Cincinnati still life painter. And my main focus is trying to tell narratives uh, with using vintage toys. When I was in college at UC, I painted people, and I wanted to in, I wanted to start including objects with the people to start telling stories. And then close to the end, I started getting interested in telling uh, stories with just objects. My professional career started with me selling still life paintings. So after doing that, um, I painted a big boy bank and my gallery got really excited and they said, would you want to do some more toy paintings? And I thought, sure, that'd be, that'd be great. So as I started trying to set up these paintings, I really liked trying to include some sort of story or narrative. I was painting a lot of animal toys and then I started using squeaky toys from the 50s. And so the, the toys kind of became the figure for me. Um, Pinocchio, um, the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. Um, I'm really drawn to things that are made in the likeness of people, but there's something really nice about the caricature aspect of a toy. What's kind of surprising for me is that I'm not painting the toys from my childhood. I grew up in the 80s and everything was commercialized and there was a cartoon for every toy line. I think as as time has gone on, toys become more exact interpretations of that show. And I'm kind of drawn to toys that the individual sculptors and designers had more of a say. They were artists in their own right. I mean, I I didn't even know when I was originally drawn to my favorite toys that they were based on Ruth Newton drawings, uh, illustrations from the early 20th century. And then um, Edward Mobley is the sculptor who did clay sculptures based on uh, Ruth Newton's drawings. And one of the most recent paintings I did was a, a toy that I bought just because I loved the sculpt of it. And then I found out after the fact that that same sculptor did that toy, even it was for a different company. But I thought there's something that resonates about his interpretation though. He was able to convey some emotion. And then what I try to do is kind of put that in an environment and kind of take it to the next stage. The big toy mural that I did um, on uh, West Court Street was to honor the heritage of Kenner Toys. It was really fun. To me, the challenge of that was I couldn't just set up a single still life and take a photo of it because it was so big. I built that image in probably seven different little subplots. Whereas a normal, when I'm painting a still life, I set it up in my studio and I put the light on it and I just set my chair up. I even tape off where the legs are and I sit back in my chair and I observe it and I paint directly from the still life. But obviously you can't do that on a building. So I composed it in Photoshop with different little clusters um, and different layers and kind of built the space. And then I unified it by painting the shadows in. And then when we, to get that onto the wall, we use a grid. So when I did a printout, one square inch became two feet uh, on the wall. We created a line drawing, and then um, what, when my team was blocking it in, I actually counted up the cups when we were cleaning up. Um, I mixed over 700 colors for that wall. So when you're working on something that large, you can't just have a palette set up. So I think the, the one of the background colors, I made seven gallons of, of that one color. There's something really wonderful standing in front of such a huge wall to where it kind of fills your whole vision. They're still basically still life paintings, but I always think about where the viewers are going to see them from, the vantage point. So uh, when I did the Kroger mural, I designed it as if you're standing on the corner looking up and you can kind of see up to the inside of the box. Uh, when I did the Kenner mural, you're kind of looking up and to the right. And then the newest mural I just did for Bang Zoom Designs is a Stretch Monster toy. Um, he was the bad guy nemesis of Stretch Armstrong, but I tried to paint him to where it looks like he's actually holding onto the side of the building. So I painted the cast shadows underneath him to look like a shadow on that colored wall. I'm thinking about when I paint that image, how the sun's going to be on that wall. And, and the direction that you're looking at the object. So when you when you drive by and you look over at the side of that building, I want it to trick your eye 
you know, kind of make people take a second look to wonder if there's actually some giant toy on the side of the wall. I mean, it's one of the beautiful things about murals is, you know, you can go to a museum or a gallery because you want to look at art, but when you're driving down the street, it just happens upon you. And there's, there's something kind of special about when, when an image engages you when you weren't expecting it.